Joy Carpine Pizanti with the Washington State Department of Transportation SR520 program. And I'm joined here today on the east side with Steve Strand, who's the project engineer for construction on the east side transit and HOV project. Steve, can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing here on the east side? So we're on Evergreen Point Lid right now. Uh, we've got another one at 92nd and another one at 84th. All three of these lids help reconnect the communities that were divided when the highway went through. And we'll have plantings on the lids, some landscaped areas for you know, community gatherings, kind of pull both sides of the, the highway back together. This is also an access point down to the transit stops. You'll be able to walk down the staircase or use the elevator to get down to the transit stops that are in the median. So one of the big changes that's being made throughout this stretch of the highway is the adjustment to the HOV lanes. We will be adding an eastbound and then moving the westbound. Both of them will be on the inside lanes, typical for what you would see throughout the rest of this state. One of the benefits that that provides, uh, especially with our transit stations, is more reliable commute times for those buses, as well as uh, eliminating some of the merges that you would otherwise have. So here we are just east of the 92nd lid, standing on the regional trail. This trail runs from 108th Avenue all the way out to Evergreen Point Road. It's 14 foot wide, mixed use path for bikes, for pedestrians, for strollers, whatever you want to take out there except for vehicles. It touches in with some of the other local trails that are throughout this corridor. You know, we've got a number of retaining walls that are constructed, and up above are some of our noise walls. We've got noise walls throughout the corridor. Studies were done to determine where the best benefit would be to the public and taxpayers as far as selection of where the noise walls are and their height. So with these eight culverts that we've replaced, you know, there's been a, a real conscious effort of going back and, and trying to make these streams function like they would have had we never been here. Basically what it is, is just a very large culvert that allows the stream to flow more naturally through it. So in this stream restoration area, we've got, you know, the large woody debris in the water, rock piles, we've got uh, wood piles out, out upland, we've got raptor perches, uh, we'll be installing bat boxes as well to help bring back some bats in the area, native plant species that are being brought back in. And this stream, when we're all done, it's going to function like your natural stream. When, when we get high rains, there's going to be floods and we've got areas set aside for that flood water to go into and then recede from there. So the designers took a lot of time on this and really tried to create something and try to emulate nature as best possible. Construction really started uh, spring of 2011. And since that time, we've been able to construct noise walls, do a lot of the paving work that's been done. All of our girders are set. The lids are mostly poured out. And then uh, continuing on, you know, wherever we can move on to the next phase of construction, we're pushing to try to get all this wrapped up summer of next year, get the final, final lift of asphalt out there and get some paving and striping done and uh, you know, wrap this project up and move on to the next one.